Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit. Today in the next episode of the What Are We Eating series, I'm trying prepackaged processed ribeye steaks once again with very low expectations after the Dollar Tree ribeye steaks. They can't be any worse, or can they? So let's get started and see how these compare to Dollar Tree ribeye steaks and fresh ribeye steaks. The steaks I'm trying today are from Stony Fork Farm Specialty Meats. I paid $8.99 for this package of two 8-ounce steaks, which obviously works out to be $8.99 a pound, which is the typical price of fresh ribeye steaks around here. So the price is right and we're off to a good start. So let's go over the packaging like we always do and start with the dreaded phrase, with up to a blank solution added which in my opinion automatically sends up a warning flag. In this case, it's 20% added. In the dollar store steaks, it was 30%. So what does the solution equate to in the product? Salt and weight, as you will see. The nutritional values show just how much crap is pumped into this meat. 280 calories per steak. Doesn't sound bad, right? Well, a fresh ribeye has about 77 calories per ounce which would equate to 616 calories for an eight ounce fresh ribeye. So how does Stony Fork Farms get their calories so low in an eight ounce steak? It's easy. They pump a smaller steak full of their solution to get eight ounces. Once you get to the sodium, you have 1,140 milligrams of sodium per steak. That's nearly 50% of your daily sodium intake. Let's put this into perspective. A fresh eight ounce ribeye steak has approximately 128 milligrams of sodium. All of this sodium is coming from that 20% solution which contains things like potassium lactate, which is used to prolong the shelf life, and sodium phosphates, which control the pH and processed foods. Both ingredients regardless are still forms of unnecessary salt. Then you have hydrolyzed soy protein, which if I've done my research correctly, creates a byproduct called, are you ready for this? MSG. I personally don't mind or have a problem with MSG, but some people do. And to me, if I've done my research correctly, this is just a sneaky way of getting MSG into a product without listing it. These are the original flavor ribeyes from Stony Fork Farms. They had two other flavors and they had even more sodium, believe it or not. Here's what they look like in the packaging and they actually don't look too bad. Now, when I take them out of the package, they don't look nearly as appealing. And at this part of the video, I almost stopped and threw them away. But I carried on for you guys. The smell was awful. It smelled like sulfur and bad eggs. And the feel of the meat was just plain weird. It felt like a combination of a slippery eel and soft, mushy liver. And don't get me wrong, I love liver. I just don't want my steak to feel like liver. So I blotted them dry on both sides with paper towels. And since I already know how much sodium is in these steaks, I just seasoned one on both sides with black pepper. And then I realized most people buying these steaks won't look or know better about the salt content. So I seasoned the other steak with regular seasoned salt, which I think would probably be a common seasoning for most people. And that's not meant to be a knock on anyone, but some people really don't know or pay attention to things like sodium. Then I added just a little bit of oil to my cast iron pan over medium heat, and then I added the steaks. Trying to keep them together in uniform as possible since they seem to be falling apart. Now I'm gonna cook these for about four minutes per side. And you guys know me, I like my steaks rare or medium rare. But the package said to cook these to 160 degrees. And by golly, after the smell that came out of the package, you better believe I'm gonna cook them to 160 degrees. After four minutes, they kind of grew a tail. So I gave them a flip and let them go for four more minutes. Once they hit 160 degrees, I pulled them off and let them rest for about five minutes. and then sliced both steaks for a very much anticipated taste test. That's sarcasm, by the way. And now I'm gonna try the steak with the seasoned salt first. And yes, that is a one steak sauce back there. I thought if there was ever a need for steak sauce, it would be today. The steak is firm when you squeeze it, but it pulls apart fairly easy. At least the first piece did. And it seems to be pretty moist. 
This steak really had no flavor other than the seasoned salt. It was definitely moist, but very gristly. And then I tried the one with the pepper with the same results. The meat had no flavor. All I tasted was the pepper, but it was moist and very gristly. All right, let me be totally honest. I'm being too nice. These steaks were awful. And then I tried both steaks with A1 steak sauce. And I gotta tell you, A1 steak sauce has never tasted so good. If I was really eating this as a meal, I'd throw the steaks away and drink the A1. The bottom line is, these steaks are no different than the dollar store steaks, just bigger and more expensive. And buy a fresh steak. At least then, if you're paying $8.99 a pound, you're getting 16 ounces of meat instead of 20% solution and a little bit of meat. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you do not give these a try. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and come back every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for new recipes and cooking videos.